This is a lesson on the C major section of the Volume 2 Method Book, and this is from Part 1, uh, where we go through different keys and whatnot. And so we're going to do the C major section and then the Allegro by Carulli. So before we begin um, just playing through everything that uh, is in the section, I just wanted to mention a quick comment about the use of the fourth finger on the third string on the top two strings. So often when we're playing scales, it's actually really good to use your third finger, but you'll like one, one finger per fret essentially, right? Just using one finger per fret. Now in the book, however, you'll notice that I use my fourth finger on those top two strings. That is because in repertoire, the majority of the time, um, you have to use your fourth finger because there's other stuff going on and it's just a little bit easier to reach the edge of the fret as well. But if you're playing with the fourth finger there, then your third finger is ready to jump down and get a bass note or something like that. Many students are prone to ignoring the fourth finger in their repertoire because they never practice it in their scales or in their melodic work. So in this book, I finger all of those notes usually, almost all the time, not all the time, but most of the time, with the fourth finger. You can ignore that if you can keep it separate, but students who are prone to ignoring fingering and ignoring the fourth finger should be consistent in using it both in the scales and in the repertoire. Um, especially youth students sometimes get confused by the inconsistencies between the scale fingering and the repertoire fingering. If you're an adult um, and you think you can separate the two very clearly and very um, consciously and whatnot, then by all means use your third finger. Um, I'll leave that decision up to you, but if you're in any doubt that you sometimes use the wrong fingerings, use the ones that are exactly listed in my book, because I think it's very important that we build good habits into your playing from the beginning that are connected to repertoire, so we make a connection between the technique and the repertoire. Later on, you'll probably end up using your third finger when you play technique and um, exercises and things like that. So, a one octave C major scale. Make sure you use, you're using alternating I am fingering. So I am, 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 I. Or in reverse, you can start with M. M, I am, I am, I am, I. You can do free stroke. That's when you bypass the string below, or rest stroke. Rest stroke being when you when your stroke hits the string below. Um, I'll leave the rest stroke and free stroke issue up to your teacher because um, I sometimes leave rest strokes for much later in students' developments, especially if they're kids, but it depends. Don't forget to also finger your scales with M-A alternation. M-A, 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 M. Um, both of those kind of alternating patterns will be very important. Now, the C major position scale, all that position scale means is that we're going to go to the highest note in the position and then the lowest note. Position meaning this area of the guitar right here. So why do we play position scales? Because if you're reading a piece in C major, those are the notes that would be available to you. Because remember, C major refers to a key as well means no sharps or flats. So all those notes are available. Of course notes in pieces go outside of the notes of the scale. It's just that's what happens in music. So a position scale on the guitar is very important because then it teaches us what the highest notes are in that area of the guitar. A one octave C major arpeggio. Arpeggios are just broken up chords, right? The notes of the chord broken up. So there's um, the notes in a triad, or in a C major arpeggio, are the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. That is, if you think of a major scale, one, two, three, four, five, then one, three, five, or C, E, G. Any combination of C, E, and G is a C chord. So an arpeggio is just a broken up chord where the notes are played individually. You can see that my left hand, you don't even... You don't even need to move it. You just grab a C chord and then arpeggiate with the right hand. 
C major triads are just the same thing, but in block form, with the notes played together, that is. Root position, with the that means the C is in the bass. And then the third in the bass, the E. And then the fifth in the bass, the G. And back to first inversion. So inversions are just different voicings of the same chord. So if there's three notes, C, E, and G in a chord, you can scramble those notes up in different orders and you still have a C chord, but then we sometimes call them in um, to be in different inversions. So a root position chord is with the C or the tonic or the first note in the bass. So if it's a C chord, C would be in the bass. If it was a G chord, G would be in the bass. Um, and then there's a chord progression that you can just strum with your thumb for now. It goes C, F, C, A minor, D minor, G, G7, C. This teaches you some of the chords within the key of C major. Um, and it also teaches you a little bit about Roman numeral analysis. So if you see underneath the chords on this page, um, there's little Roman numerals, and those just refer to that the first note is a C chord, and that's a chord built on the first note of the scale. And then an F chord. One, two, three, four, F. So a chord built on the fourth note of the scale. A minor would be built on the sixth, so C, D, E, F, G, A, A minor. So you don't have to worry too much about that. You just want to become familiar with the shapes mostly and the pop chord kind of terminology for now because when you're playing pieces, you're going to see things like C chords come up and teachers might say like, oh, it's just a C chord and you want to know what that shape looks like. So it's good for you to know these chords, even if you're not going to be like a, a, a folk singer style like guitarist or a popular music style guitarist, you should still know what the shapes are called and what the chords are. It's very important just to the universal language music. That F chord has a bar in it, so that means that the first finger has to play the C and the F on the top string, so just make sure that your finger is really close to the fret, not at an angle. If you play like that, it's going to buzz and squeak, so just make sure your finger is right close to that fret, a little bit on the side of the finger there. It's not that hard, you don't have to push too, too hard or anything like that. If your hand position is slightly off and you're like this, you're going to have to push to compensate. And you might be able to get it to stop buzzing, but it's, uh, you're going to have to use too much strength and your hand will get tired. So make sure you're really flush with the fret. Also check out this four voice chord progression. In this case, we're going to pluck just four notes with P, I, M, A. Notice is that these chords are exactly the same as the strummed chord progression. Except that we're just isolating the notes that we're playing instead of strumming all six strings. So in the C chord, I'm leaving out the fourth string. exercise in reading music notation than anything else but because you know the shapes already you'll know that it's a C shape and then you just have to kind of just know what fingers what strings you're plucking right it doesn't make it any more difficult so my recommendation is to learn those chord progressions first and then play the four voice chord progression afterwards that way the reading it's not all up to the reading you can just look at the chord shape and say like oh it's a C chord I'm leaving out the fourth string and then you just play won't be too difficult to read. And you'll slowly adapt. As you go through the entire book, you'll slowly adapt to reading this, these chords. So don't worry if it's a bit of a struggle at, at first. Now, the Allegro, number eight from Opus uh, 333 by Carulli. This is a great little etude, perfect for the C major section. Um, it opens with triplets. Just remember, triplets are three notes to a beat. So one, two, three, of that and the second bar goes to eighth notes so that 
change between triplets and eighth notes is a little bit challenging. Eighth notes and triplets, while well, eighth notes are two notes for every beat, triplets are three notes to every beat. But don't worry too much about um, the rhythm. There is a rhythm section of this book, which we're going to dive into. But just listen and make sure you're playing it with a solid quarter note. So as long as your quarter note is solid, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. As long as that is solid, then you can't go too wrong because there's nothing that those are the only rhythms in the piece. So I recommend just using a metronome to the to the quarter note beat just to keep track of everything. So there's fingering in this piece. I'll play the piece for you, but um, one other thing you want to keep clearly in mind is that in the second bar you'll see a rest in the bass voice. One, two. It happens on the second beat when the M finger plays that upper D. So um, just mute that string by putting your thumb back on the string. So the thumb and the M finger will pretty much be at the same time. Thumb muting a string, the M playing a string. You'll notice too that this is a perfect example of why we use the fourth finger on that upper D. It's because this finger is playing the C, so we need to play that D with a different finger. That's why we often use the fourth finger on those upper strings, and why we had that discussion in the C major scale. So let me play this piece. So just make sure that you have a, a solid quarter note beat and that you're following the fingerings. Um, in the first method book, we did lots of alternating I am, but now we're going to start throwing the A finger in on occasion. It makes perfect sense here to use the A finger because those strings are so far apart that throwing the A finger in just means that um, it's not so far away for the M finger. And it also, sometimes you just want to set up the finger for awkward string crossings. And so I really preferred to use my M finger on that second string. And so the A finger was just a way better um, finger to use instead of reaching the I finger way up and then doing an awkward string crossing. So the introduction of the A finger is pretty new and it's very specific right hand fingering. In the first book, we didn't get too specific. I just said alternate, alternate, alternate as best you can. Now we're adding some very specific fingerings in that you have to follow in order to learn good habits. So make sure that you, you are indeed following that. I don't think there's too much else to say. Just recognize those chord shapes. The first bar is a C chord. So if you practice the chord section of the C major, then the chords will make sense, hopefully, a little bit in this other section. In the third bar, it's a G7 chord. The slash chord just means that it's a G7 chord with a D in the bass. So you're going to see tons of different G7 chords. G7 chords just have G, B, D, and F in them. And they can be in any combination, so they can look different sometimes. But you just want to recognize that like, when you were playing a G7 and then you play that bar, you're like, oh yeah, that's the top part of that G7 chord. Recognizing this, if you do this enough and you keep on identifying chords in this way, you'll start to gain an awareness of how music works. And also it can be helpful in memorizing, like I would memorize this piece by saying it's a C chord, followed by some melodic work in C, then a G7 chord. And just, you can kind of name an entire bar of music just based on the chord, which really helps simplify the material. So um, I'll be recording the duets uh, with Natasha very soon. So you'll be seeing the duet videos separately from these ones, but just look on the list where you purchase the book. Um, there's a list of videos, so you'll be seeing all of them there.